Yo, peace was good. Welcome to another hip hop I'm review. This is part 202. The album that we're reviewing today is uh, Boogie Down Productions with Sex and Violence. This is the very last album they recorded together. Um, this is their fifth album. Um, you guys should know who Boogie Down Productions is. I did a review on the first four albums. I think the last time I did was Edutainment, which I did about two months ago. My apologies um, for taking so long. I've been busy with work, the podcast, and things of that nature. But um, hopefully some of you guys seen um, like some of the episodes that I did with Speak Your Cloud Podcast. Kind of give you guys an idea of what I do on the podcast and stuff like that. So I really enjoy that. Um, now getting back to this album. Um, like I said, Ed- um, Edutainment was dropped back in 1990. Um you know, very successful album. You know, known for the songs "Love's Gonna Get You," very big single. I think, in in fact, I think that's like successfully, like commercially. I think that's their biggest single in their career, as far as like um as a group. And then, in after 1990, you know, he um started putting out projects. He put out the um the live worldwide hardcore album. It's a live album that I dropped in '91. In my opinion, one of the best live albums. As far as hip hop, like, whoo, man, his performance is so dope. And what's dope about that, um, that album is that he plays like some like, you know, exclusive songs that you'll only hear on the concerts. Like you won't hear, you wouldn't hear it on any of the albums and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that's the thing with live albums. A lot of live albums are known for that. Um, and also. He dropped the the Heal project. I uh, forgot the name of it. Uh, I forgot the acronyms what it stood for, but it's pretty much like the continuation of self destruction, that kind of thing, which I'll talk about later on. You know what I mean? But um, and then he dropped this album right here. Very controversial album. You know what I mean? In 1992, you know, Sex and Violence, Karis One. He man, he was going through a lot at that year, man. You know, he was going at. He was going at Ice Cube. He was going at MC Hammer. He was going at X Clan. He was from his, he must pretty much going at the whole industry. Let me turn down. It's a little bit too loud. Man. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, he was just going at the industry, man. And this was pretty much the whole premise of this album. We noticed that. Um, each album has somewhat of a concept, you know what I mean? So, with this album, he's kind of going at the industry and, like, the media and all that shit. So, that's why I thought it was cool. And hence the name Six and Violence, because that's what sells. So, he kind of goes against that. Alright, so, let me show you guys what the album looks like. Dope drawing, you see, like, a politician with a stripper. You see, see like, the chaos and shit like that. That's what people love, man, Sex and Violence, you know? Um, the thing this three singles off the album. The singles are... Duck Down, whew, love that joint, um, 13 and Good, and We Ended, those are the three singles of the album, right, you know, I get down, show you guys what the album looks like, alright, like I said, show you guys that, you see Karis One chilling, got the ill haircut, got the half moon, very dope, very 90s, you know, love that, you know what I'm saying, that's what the C looks like, I love that, you know, with the graffiti, sex and violence and graffiti form. Because the other albums, there was just like, you just have like the name of the album, Beat Booking Out Productions, and you got the Jive label on the top. You know, very plain, but with this, like, you actually put in work. So, put like spit on my, spit on my CD and shit. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Same thing. You know, same picture as the back track listen. All right. This is what it looks like. Pretty cool. And then this right here got like got like a dope um dope saying pretty much going at you know going at the industry that kind of thing and then he reads out who did the production I thought it was pretty cool I'll read that to you guys um so pretty much he says in 1992 I am joined by DJ Kenny Parker which is his brother Prince Paul D Square and Pal Joy to create Sex and Violence I of course had my hand in mixing writing and arranging this album but this time Prince Paul is responsible for beats on Drug Dealer, Sex and Violence, and How Not to Get Jerked. Pal Joel, he did beats on Material Love, now produces and co wrote Who Are the Pimps, Duck Down, 13 and Good, Questions and Answers, and Carers One. My long term studio engineer, D Square, steps into the beat making process to create Rough Rough, in which Freddy Fox gets ill on the mic. Poison Products, 
We ain't there like a throttle and building the Detroit are done by Kenny Parker, his brother. Um, the original way is Kenny and D-Square. Seigyao was done by me, Karis one, and the real Hulk is by me and D-Square. Willie D and Sydney Mills helped to hype with it. Help to hype up We in There, D-Square Rock, all that technical shit with Peter George, Daryl Rovin, and Tim Lathan as assistants. Join Mix the 12 Inch and the album versions of Dug Down. All those crazy inserts between songs were me, Kenny, and Charles Chuck Coco. Um, our publishing is the Zumba or Zumba Enterprise Incorporated BDP Music uh, Administration by Zumba Enterprises ASCAP. Everything was tracked and mixed at either 39th Street Music or Battery Studios. Tom Coyne at DMS, who I've trusted with all my mastering, did this with us too. As for the look of sex and violence, the painting is by is done by Rob Williams. The photos were taken by Gary Spector. The growth graffiti um, piece was done by Bio Brim, Easy Colt, BG, and TK. And the pack was done by Zomb Art NG. And he says, and BD, BDP in 1992 is KRS One, Willie D, and Kenny Parker. BDP is in 92 is not D Nice, Jamalski, Harmony, Ms. Melody, or, and Scotty Morris. They're not down with BDP, so stop front. We roll tight and hard this year because too many people want something for nothing. Section Violence represents radio and television in that order. I call this album Sex and Violence because this is what the internet has become in 92, thus creating a more sexist and violent youth in America via the world. It is the youth that I speak to daily through hard hip-hop music for hard times. So that day you have it, you know what I mean? So, you know how I get down, I'm going to go through some of the tracks, speak on it, all right? Uh, track one, the original way, uh, dope way to start the album. Uh, it starts off with like a reggae dub instrumental, just him talking his shit on his, you know, his patois. Cause you know he's West Indian, you know, just him playing selector, you know, kind of thing. And then the beat switches. Um, then you know he spits the mic. Him and Freddie Fox goes in. Um, I wrote down um, Freddie Fox. He introduces Freddie Fox. Freddie Fox goes first. Then KRS One. Um, I wrote down where um, Freddie Fox when he sounds. Um, he starts it off when he says, "Give the give that microphone so I can take it to the front line." Cause in the rap world, I shoot off I shoot off rhymes and sound off like. So I'm sound over buck like an M16. When I hit the scene, suckers turn green. Woo! Man, that was dope. Karis one way says, my car is not tent. I don't eat with a chimp. When I eat, when I read, I don't squint. In real life, I got the hard shit. Woo! He's just letting niggas know, like, yo, I ain't fucking around. Just so fucking, like, he's just, yo, I'm not the one to fuck with. All that positive shit, that just went out the window. I'm, I'm chopping niggas' heads off. That's what I got from that, man. Um, The beat... Um, you know, it's like, it's like a more, like, it's more like a drum beat over a hard drum. It's like a drum hard beat, hard drum beat, excuse me. And it has like a little, little stab samples into it. So I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, that's the original way, dope way to start the album. Kind of sets the tone of the album. Love that. Uh, track two, Duck Down, which was like the second single of the album. One of my favorite tracks off the album. Love it. Love the video. Just so fucking dope, man. The drumming, the drum programming, and the samples that was used. It's like, it just gives me happy every time I heard that, hear that shit. Um, him performing that shit live, man. Yo, I get hyped. I've seen him perform live. Man, he, he he's the truth. That, that's all I have to say about that. Um, but yeah, Duck Down, one of my favorite tracks. Second single of the album, like I said before. Um, love the beat, love the energy of the song. Um, Love how it started off, man. The way he started it off, I just love it. I, I wrote it down. Where it said, you're stuck up, you, your luck's up, you fucked up, your mother. You can't even jump up, so shut the fuck up. What up? Tougher. Buck, 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 buck. Buck, buck, buck. It's all you're going to hear when Carol step up. I'm thick like syrup. No, I'm not cover up. Woo! Man, he just goes in. Yo, I, I love that. And there's rumors that Duck Down Records got... The name dug down from that song, so um, which makes sense, you know what I mean. But I'm just surprised that they didn't make music or you know around that time, like they waited like years later, back in 2000s and stuff like that. But you know, better late than never. So um, very dope. Uh, track three, drug dealer, very dope track. Um, what I got from that song was that you know he's pretty much saying like how you know drug dealers instead of um, he's pretty much taking shots at drug dealers. He's pretty much saying like how. 
you know, instead of destroying your community, you should be building with the money you make from making from selling drugs, and you know, pretty much taking shots at that. So I love that. Um, I like the line when he says, "Every race got ahead of from selling drugs except black. We are under attack." Here comes another cold fact: in the 30s and 40s, a drug dealer wasn't black. They were Jewish, Italian, Irish, Polish, etc., etc. Now in '90, their lives are a lot better. That's so fucking true, dude. That's so true because it's like in the '30s, like again, black people back in those days, you know, they they were it was like still in, in the tail. I mean, even though slavery was abolished in 1865, they were still like the effects of slavery was alive and well at that time. You know what I mean? Even though blacks. Especially like in the in the north, like you know, in like New York and like Illinois and stuff like that, there were more slaves compared to the South. Um, you know, but there was still a lot of racism going on. But the people that were making money were the cats that I mentioned. And then if you notice, like, you know, even to this day, you know, they, they run shit. Like the all you know, all the Jews, they run a lot of the corporations and all that shit, you know what I mean? And and they're just living, they're just living life and living well and, you know, just have all these properties and only these Fortune 500 companies and all that stuff. So, very true what he says, man. Um, yeah, I, that's definitely, definitely true. And it's, it's, even to this day, it goes, it goes on to this day, you know? So, um, the wealthy are people of those regions, you know what I mean? So, it's just what are they, the Jewish and the, the Europeans, you know? So, that's just what it is. Uh, track four, like a throttle, one of my favorite joints, very dope joint. Um, yeah, very dope shit. I like the line when he says, "But MCs come, come up. Uh, MCs come half-ass, looking pitiful. None of them are lyrical, but their ego is critical. Love that. So fucking true because these motherfuckers, man, these motherfuckers today, it's like they just come like you know, like their shit don't stink, and like they're the best shit." Best shit in, since sliced bread, sliced bread and all that shit. Man, I can't even talk today. Since sliced bread. But then it's like when he get called out, it's like, yo, you ain't that nigga you talk about. Look, Takashi 6 9 prime example. Another line where he says, don't test me. You ain't a chemist. And I saw sure ain't chem- chemistry. You're not a mathematician. My name ain't ge- geometry. You ain't no astronomer. Why well, see me as astronomy? But I'm a parker, so I'll play you like a monopoly. Man. That nigga going in, son. I'm telling you, niggas chopping niggas' heads off. And he, he ain't playing. Niggas angry on this album. That's what I love about this album. Um, Yeah, man. Very dope song. Like a throttle. One of my favorite tracks. Um, Track five, Build and Destroy. Very dope track. He goes at um, MC Hammer X Clan. Um, There was a line when he says, um, he takes shots at MC Hammer when he says, You can touch this, but you'll get shot. Very dope. I mean, that that right there is a blatant, 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 you know, shot toward MC Hammer. Um, when he took shots at Ed Clan, when he says, "In my face, you're happy. On vinyl, you're mad at me. Yo, your pro blackness is your solution. But I don't really know what about that style you're using, yo. Too many teachers in the class, sport of school. After a while, you got blabbering fucking fools, man. He took shots at him." At them, X Clan, Brother J, and all them cats, man. And it was pretty much saying like how they like they're not about what they talk about. They just it's just a front. Like you guys don't live that life that y'all speak on and stuff like that. Because you know they were taking shots at um Karis One because then it's like oh he's not he's not a humanist. Like he he contradicts everything he says in his songs, which is somewhat true because Karis One in the past he has talked a lot of shit, but then he. He backtracks to what he says, and you know that's one thing about Carol's one that bothers me about him. He'll say one thing, but then he says another. It's like what the fuck, you know? But it is what it is. But um, they pieced it up after a while. But you know, at the time that was a big thing. Um, track six, Rough Rough, featuring Freddie Fox. Um, Freddie Fox apparently once again he was all, also already on the original way. Second track that he's featured on, very dope joint. One of my favorite tracks off the album. Love the beat. Definitely has like that really that has like that seventies car chase scene kind of feel to it. I love that. Um, love the line by Karis One where he says, "Um, as a matter of fact, I attack his his back set back your career like a quarterback that broke his back. My tongue is like a bar. Your your eye will get black. You need an ice pack. 
Love that. He just goes in and in and in, man. I love that joint. Very dope joint. That easily could have been a single, in my personal opinion, man. I love that. Now, track seven, 13 and Good. Very, very, very controversial track, all right? Um, you know, in this song, he talks about, and mind you, I don't think he's talking about him, per se, him doing this. What I got from it is that in the hood, you got older men going out, going with, you know, younger chicks. And these younger chicks are fucking chasing these older men because they got the bread there. They're clean. Um, they have no diseases or anything like that. So, um, you know, again, yeah, like, like, which is very common in the hood, you know, and even like in like, in, in third world countries, that's very common. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, like in this song, you know, he talks about he meets this girl who's 13 years old, but at the time, like, you know, he asked him, like, yo, how old are you? He's like, oh, I'm 13 years old. I'm like, damn, you don't look 13. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't realize that until they had sex. And so he's kind of like, oh, shit, what the fuck did I get myself into? And so she calls her father. Her father's a cop. So her father comes to where she's at, where they fucked. And finds them in bed or whatever. She beats the shit out of his daughter. She runs home. Nigga closes the door. Alright? Now it's me and you alone. You fucked my daughter. Now it's my turn. So, the father tries to fuck Kara's one. Kara's one ain't having that. Beats the shit out of that dude. He's like, yo, you can have my daughter anytime you want. But you gotta fuck me first. Kara's one wasn't having that, man. And he put the blocks on that nigga, man. So, <laughs> yo, that shit is crazy. And I, I want to say one thing about this song because there's a lot of people talking shit about this song because of the whole African Bombada scandal that happened. Fuck that nigga, by the way. Um, you know, they were saying, like, you know, because Kara Kara's one kind of shot himself in the foot, saying like he was pretty much defending. African Bambada in so many words, you know, and he called out a shit about that, and because of that, now all these vloggers and all these people found the song dirty and good, and he's like, oh, but he's he's supporting, you know, pedophilia, but in fact, the song is about shit that niggas going to do in the hood, especially the older cats. I know cats like that, you know, um, cats that would graduate out of high school, they would go fucking hang out. After they graduated high school, they would still try to get with these high school chicks. They would go, like, right after school, and they get out. They chill, like, in the school grounds, which I don't know why the fuck they would do that. Try to hide these chicks to fuck them. It's like, it's crazy, man. That, that shit is crazy. So that's pretty much what he's talking about. And that happens all the... Look at R. Kelly. You know, the shit that's going on R. Kelly. You know, but it's just... Like, people are so ignorant. Uh, track 8, Poisonous Products. Very dope. In this song, you know, he just talks about how... Um, TV is poison, you know what I mean? The media is poison, the shit that they blurred out, people are brainwashed, um, things like that. Um, and he also questions religion and the Bible and things like that. I thought that was a pretty dope track. Um, one of my favorites as well. Uh, track nine, uh, questions and answers. Um, and very dope conceptual track. In this song, he actually um, interviews himself, then he answers the questions that he, um, the interviewer, which is himself, is answering. So like it says, what is your name? My name is KRS One from the Boogie Down Bronx. Um, what is your occupation? I'm a rapper. You know, I'm i I'm just paraphrasing what he said, but the way he goes about it is very dope. I like the beat, you know, very dope. You know what I'm saying? And in this song he actually talks about how college is a scam as well. You know what I mean? I thought that was pretty dope. Which I do agree too, you know, but um we definitely do need education. But I do feel like um edu um you know, college is definitely a scam. That's just my personal opinion. People getting crazy student loans and owing mad bread, you know, me included. You know, this is what it is. Um, so that's track nine, questions and answers. Uh, track 10, Say Gyal. Very dope song, very controversial. In this song, you know, he speaks on the Mike Tyson rape charge that happened, the, the accusations, the allegations that Mike Tyson did happen with um, Robin Givens and stuff like that. 
Um, but he also talks about how um, there's women out there that fake, that do these allegations that never happened. Um, where, like, there'll be cases where, you know, there'll be, like, groupies that would have consensual sex with celebrities. But then later on, they'd be like, oh, he raped me, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, fuck that shit. So he calls all those chicks out and stuff like that. So I'm glad he did that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of that going on. Uh, track 11, we in there. Love that joint. That's the um, third and final single of the album. Um, very, very, very dope, man. Um, in this song, he takes shots at Ice Cube, like I mentioned earlier. Um, because I think in the song, um, I forgot the name. I forgot the song that he um, said, but he was pretty much saying like how self destruction doesn't pay the bills. So I wrote down. Um, when he responded back to Ice Cube, when he says, the type of lyrical terrorism I present educates people at the same time pays my rent. Then another line where he says, your whole gangster image is not legit. Your whole criminal mind hit bit the whole shit. You know what I mean? And, um, like I said, it, like I said, it was due to Ice Cube saying self-destruction doesn't pay the rent. And so that's what he talks about. And, um, he was saying because of how, um, he made the America's Most Wanted album, and pretty much the shit that he was saying on that album is pretty much the same that he that um, Karis One did on Criminal Minded. So he kind of takes shots at Ice Cube for that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I love the beat, love the um, love the video for it too. I love the album version over the video version. The video version is it's the same beat, but I feel like the video version is kind of a little bit more lighter. The album version like, it hits more harder. But I like that version better. But that's just me. Uh, track 12. Um, no, track, track 12. Sex and Violence. Very, very, very dope. Um, this was produced by Prince Paul. Love that joint. Um, and this song, I mean, self-explanatory. It's pretty much talks about how sex and violence sells in the community. You know, it says, says sex and violence... Um, Sells in society, especially in U.S. society, over the world. Um, my thing is with this song. Although I do like the song, it maybe it's the maybe it's a beat. Just me personally, it doesn't really fit the album, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Well, it does and it doesn't. To me, it felt more like a like a leftover track that would have been on. Um, Edutainment. It would have fit better on edutainment. Maybe it would, if it was like a different beat, then I think it would have you know fit better. But overall, not a bad track. It, the the subject matter very dope. It's just the beat was kind of it was good, but I, I just felt like it fit better with edutainment over this album. But not a bad thing. But that's just my opinion on that. Track thirteen, how not to get jerked. Very dope track. Pretty much talks about how how not to get jerked around the music industry, you know that whole saying of um, Rule 4080 industry, the ruggish um, ruggish industry is shady, that kind of thing. Like what Q-Tip said, you know what I mean? Um, he just talks about how not to sign a record, a bad record deal. I love the line where he says, "Now understand this, rap is rebellious, therefore only the rebels should use it." I'm a firm believer in that. But pop artists abuse it. When the audience hears real, hears real rap, they boo it. That's so fucking true. That happens today. Because they got these fake ass niggas like Drake and and and, and Plies and all these motherfuckers, man. They think they gangsters and all that shit. And they pollute that shit. And people think they, they're fucking gangsters because they roll with gangster niggas. And he talks about that. And then that was actually on the from the third verse. And he talks about culture vultures. Which is happening today. It's not just white people that people think. You got black niggas that are culture vulture. I.E. Steve Stout. He talks about that shit. You know what I mean? And this is 1992 he's talking about that. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, Kara's one that was on some shit on this album, man. Um, Yeah, that's track 13. How Not to Get Jerked. Track 14. Who Are the Pimps? Man. I think everybody that pays taxes needs to listen to this album. Bar none. Who are the pimps? Very dope track. You know, it's just about how the, the IRS are pimps. And the people that pay taxes are the hoes. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know how it is with these credit card companies and these insurance companies. Like, you, you try to plead them like, oh, you know, I'm kind of late on the rent. 
I'm late on the payments. Can you give an extension? Depending on your record, they'll give you an extension. But if you're like, if you're a delinquent and you try for an extension, like, nah, you got to pay that or we're going to overcharge you, whatever. It's the same thing. So, and then there was a line where he said, like, where the, the money that you pay the IRS, they're on the Bahamas doing vacation. You know, and it's so true. You know what I'm saying? So, very realistic track. Um, very, very dope. Uh, I think everybody in the mom should listen to that track. Um, that's who are the pimps, track, track 14. And track 15, um, it's the last track, the, the Real Holy Place. And um, in this track, you know, um, it, he he doesn't really rap, but he does like more like a spoken word type of track. Um, where he questions religion and you know things of that nature, um, you know it has kind of like a really somber feel to it, you know what I mean. But um, pretty much a dope way to the end the album. My overall thoughts on this album, man. Very, very, very dope album. My favorite album, my favorite BDP album, as well as Edutainment. I think that's their best albums. I know, I know a lot of people prefer um, Criminal Minded, and that's a dope album. That's one of my favorite albums as well. But if I had to choose, I would say this and Edutainment. Um, he was very angry on this album, you know. And then the whole PMD, the PM Dawn um, controversy when he threw PM Dawn off the stage, recipes to PM Dawn, um, really fucked up his career, you know. And Jive Records kind of like, oh, like, you know. You gotta, you know, you gotta do something. You know what I mean. So he had to cut ties with a lot of people, and then the X Clan um, beef that he had going on that really hurt his career. So, and, like, and again, like PM Dawn as well. And then, and at the time, that's when um, him and Miss Melody got a divorce, and it was just, so you could just hear the anger on this album. And I love that shit, man. You could just feel that shit. He was chopping niggas' heads off. He was not sparing a lot. He wasn't sparing no one. So, um, that's pretty much what I got from that joint, man. Um, very underrated album. A lot of people hate on this album. Um, because I guess, again, I think it was maybe because of the production. I love the production. Carol's one himself said that, um, the album didn't really sell very well. Um, compared to Edutainment, I think Edutainment sold 500,000 copies, whereas this album sold 250,000. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I think it's a great album. A lot of people hate on the album. I don't know why. I think it's great. It's aggressive. It's street. I love it. He's just going in on that. He's very lyrical. He gives no, no two fucks given. Um, the shit that, that's going on in the industry, he talks about this in this album in 1992. What's going on in the industry right now with the bullshit, that niggas uh, fucking supporting bullshit. He talks about that shit. That's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Definitely stay tuned for more. I will eventually review Karis when's return to Boom Bap, the self-titled album from '95, and then the I Got Next album because those are the only solo albums I have from his. And I think I have um, Sneak Attack. I'm not sure. I gotta check and see. I got so much albums. But that's it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Stay tuned for more. All right, peace.